like I like the Joker movie. It's not that I didn't like it. I just disagreed with the making it in the first place. Okay, that's fair. Fair enough. But it was a good movie. Fair enough. I don't know if I want to like. I have to be in a certain mood to watch a movie that dark and twisted. Because it is a very dark, oh, and twisted no doubt. psychological. No movie. doubt. It was, it was, I, I, That'd be like trying to watch The Shining every day. It would just mess you up for you know a while. You know what movies kind of depress me to watch is those Hellraiser movies with Pinhead. Yeah, it's just it's too fucking dark. I don't watch horror movies. To be honest, you know, not as a rule, but just I don't. I will. I will. I want to laugh, or I want to be. You know, I, I, I like suspense movies and thrillers and dramas, but I don't get down on horror movies. Yeah, it really depends. Just for, you know what kind of mood I'm in. Yeah. But I just I like getting creeped out every night. Yeah. What's going on YouTube? This is Sean P from Project Gunk. If you like what you've been seeing so far, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment. Let me know what you want to see because uh, we got a whole lot more to come. What's going on, y'all? Uh, today I got a special guest, Mr. Anthony Longero from AAL Custom Media. Thank you for having me, Sean. No problem at all, man. So, um, I'm just going to ahead and throw this out here. Uh, we, we filmed this video before, and uh, he was a little nervous, but... You know, it, it, yeah, absolutely. So, you never really know how you're going to... Well, me, I, you know, I'm, you know, you're going to look, and you're going to sound, and I'm a perfectionist, right? So, you know, I'm like, hey, if I'm going to, like, you know, come and sit down and, 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 and help, my, I mean, help my buddy out, I want to make sure that I do him right. So... Yeah. Yeah. So this is absolutely take two. Um, and honestly, uh, take one was it was just fine, but you know. So in talking about what we, <laughs> what, you know, this is going to kind of be tech talk, right? And so what I found the first time that we did the video is that in talking about things that are tech related, mm -hmm. things can get over over complicated really fast. To the point where people who aren't as familiar with the kinds of things that we're, you know, that we're going to be talking about, you know, home automation and networking, and you know, all kinds of, you know, cool stuff like that now that we have in our homes. I was going to say, especially because you enjoy oh. doing it to begin with, then it's easy to really. To oh, absolutely! About. I love what I do, and I'm one of those blessed people that, you know, when they they say we, when you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. I'm somewhere in between. I love what I do, but man, well, I work hard at it. Let, let's stop there. Uh, what do you do? So now, yeah, yeah <laughs> no, that's a, a hard question to answer. It's a hard question. Start with some of the, the basic things that you do, and we can build on that. Okay. So the basic things that we do is we set up home entertainment. Okay. I think, I think that's probably the easiest way to say it. The most basic way. The okay. most basic way. TVs. T mounting, selling, and well, we won't even get into the selling side. Um, the most basic things of mounting TVs. Okay. To the most complicated things of some very network heavy environments. Do tell. So, network heavy environments would be networking solutions, you know, okay. homes that require or function better with multiple access points, homes that require outdoor access points for and that's like what you were variety tell, of things. Like what you were telling me, uh, we were having a conversation earlier um, about the mesh. Mesh networks. Okay. That's a lot of fun. So there's several different ways to set up a home network. Okay. Right? And so what is a home network? A home network is the brain, is your brain, it's your home's brain, and everything has to connect to it. All of our phones, all of our TVs, all of our tablets, you know, when we set something up to Wi-Fi so we can watch Netflix, that's all on your home network. So the, the most basic, we have to make sure that our home networks are capable of doing <clears throat> the things that we're asking it to do. Okay. Right? Everybody has, not everybody, but people on most common things like ring doorbells. Right? So you have to know that your Wi-Fi signal strength is going to be strong enough to reach on the outside of your front door. So in the case that, now I've heard things about those extenders that, you know, you might get from Comcast or whatever. Oh yeah, because we were going back into mesh network. So different ways to set up that kind of stuff to provide your home with the Wi-Fi access, I think is what you're asking, right? So you got different ways to set it up. You can do a mesh network, okay. um, which is a wireless network. Um, 
multiple access point system. So you've got devices in your house, very small, aesthetically pleasing, depending on the brand. You know, they look different. Um, it provides your home with multiple access points so that your devices have more than one place to access your network. Okay. Right? So what's a gateway? Right? Your gateway is your modem router combo, you know, typically provided by Xfinity or AT&T Uverse or Frontier or Suddenlink or any other internet service provider. Right. Well, what a mesh network does, so all of your devices are trying to reach that one bottleneck spot. Right, which could be anywhere in the house. It could be in a closet. It could be in the living room. It could be... And the closet's not the greatest place to... No, definitely okay. not. Um, you want it centralized, right? Because remember, all of your devices in your house are trying to reach it. And if it's tucked away in a closet somewhere, you know, how many barriers, walls, and fireplaces, and appliances does it have to get... That Wi-Fi signal have to get... And once it gets there, it's weak. Yeah, it's really weak. Right? So what a mesh network does is provide your home with multiple places for your devices to get into that network. Now is that, um, so would you plan that out due to square footage or just the amount of barriers? So if it's a two story house, you, you want two? Yeah, I mean, yes. Okay. Yeah. It's a two story house, you, you definitely need something upstairs and downstairs. Okay. Um, I mean, God, just especially people, you know, families that have children. And especially right now as we're going through COVID, right? A lot of people are working from home. A lot of kids still go to school from home so, or have their, their homework. So you're getting home. a lot of work out of this. We've been blessed, you know, and don't, don't want to see, you know, a pandemic continue on and on and on. I got that. However, you know, due to the nature of the business that we're in, that I'm in, um, yeah, it requires a lot of network optimization. Okay. And so that could be hardlining homes, meaning that making all of the wall plates, you know, the Ethernet cable wall plates uh, in your house active so that you can just plug a computer or something directly into them, or installing a mesh network to provide a home with multiple access points for your devices to get into your network. Um, and then you also have other types of networking solutions, such as ceiling mounted hardlined access points or outdoor access points that provide your outdoor living spaces, your backyard, right? I mean, okay, so you're sitting in your living room and you're on your phone and you're on Wi-Fi, right? You're, you're, you're on Facebook, you're doing whatever you're gonna do. And then now you go sit out by your pool and you're not on Wi-Fi anymore. So things go real slowly. Is right? that because of a distance or is travel through so many barriers? Both. Okay. Both. So, you know, it could also be a front yard situation. You know, you got you know, an area in the front yard where you still want to be on Wi-Fi because, well, you want the speed of Wi-Fi. You want to be able to do the browsing and the social media or and all that stuff. you're out on the deck in the backyard or something Absolutely, like right? And maybe your cell signal, provide, your cell provider just doesn't provide great service and it, or even if it does, it's not as fast as Wi-Fi. So a networking solution could be putting in an outdoor access point to provide you the same network speeds and coverage that you have around your pool as you do in your living room right next to your yeah, router. so that's the whole idea of a mesh school you just yeah kind kind of yeah so yeah there's a difference between a hard-lined access point system and a mesh network system a mesh network is completely wireless and just plugs into power versus a hard-lined access point system which the um has a direct ethernet line connection to your modem yeah and i, I prefer that over uh Wi-Fi if I'm gaming, like yeah. especially playing Call of Duty, you know, reflexes yep. matter. Yep. <clears throat> well, not reflexes, but uh, response time matters. Yeah. Lag times, uh, refresh rates. Yeah. I mean, people are now getting used to some of this terminology, especially gamers. Yeah. Like, they know what, you know, they need to be able to pass through so many frames per second at so many hertz. Like, they know this kind of stuff. You know, people who play serious online gaming, you know, Call of Duty type stuff, like you're saying, like, a few milliseconds of delay can yeah, yeah. cost you your life in a game like that yeah, pretty much you know now let me ask you this uh, you told me this really cool story about this last job that you went to so especially with how uh, complex some of the stuff and get you can go into a situation expecting that you're gonna do this one thing and that could open Pandora's box in a good way yeah, yeah. so whatever you can tell us sure tell me about your experience Sure. So um, uh, the clients we're talking about is, is funny because I had just come from, from their house um, and I was talking about you to them because it was just a perfect example. 
Um, they um, were referred to to us by one of their neighbors that we'd done some projects for. Right. And their objective was they have a, a, a gated entrance to their driveway that's about 100 foot outside of their front door. Okay. Okay. So outside of their the front door of their house. And they had a, a nice gate built up, you know. Um, so they wanted a ring doorbell out on that gate so that when people arrived at their house, if they, you know, maybe they weren't expecting, they could hit the ring doorbell and then they would, you know, inside the house or away from the house, they would know who's there and allow them access into their, into even their property, right? Much less their front door. But ring doorbells work off of Wi-Fi. How do you get Wi-Fi 100 feet away from your house? Okay. Well, there are several different solutions. There's, but what we ended up installing for them was an outdoor access point that blasts their network. Is that like on the front porch or something, or do you put it like up in the yard? No, it's actually, we. it's installed directly to the house, right under okay. the soffit, under the eave. Okay. Right, um, just in the best location possible, but it provides 180 degree coverage side to side and will push out several hundred feet. So I'm able to stand across the street in their neighbor's yard and still be on their network which means that any device that you can control with your phone, you can still control that, not even inside their home. So installing that outdoor access point opened their eyes to possibilities. And they say, well, wait a second. If we can do that, well, what about a whole home audio system? And You say whole, whole home audio system? Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah, so really neat. You know, you've got one room Right, which is their media room that has a 5.1 surround sound system. And then they have two speakers in every room of the house, plus their front yard, plus their backyard. Or they're not even utilizing it. No, they didn't even have it. They didn't have any of it. And that's the fun part of what we do is when you start opening up people's eyes to the possibilities, what's out there, what can be done, then it's like, oh, wait. And you're not identifying a need that they didn't know was there. It's not a need. I mean, these are all first world solutions, right? right? They're luxury items. You, know, you don't need to have stuff like that. But it opened their eyes and go, wait a second, that's possible? I can be in any room of my house and control the audio in another room? Um, and then that led into a surveillance camera system that also gives them remote access and that they can view it on multiple TVs in the house when they're at home. And of course, when they're away from home or on vacation, they can whip out their phone and look at all of their camera systems and look at playback video. And so it's a really fun adventure of walking somebody through, again, you know, we were ju I was just brought out there to extend their Wi-Fi into their front yard to give a ring doorbell Wi-Fi access that all of a sudden snowballed into all these other wish list type things. And nobody does this all at once because it's not inexpensive, but right. it's also not ridiculously expensive. It's not so, as expensive as a lot of people think. So when you run into situations like that, do you get mm -hmm. giddy because, okay, I have an opportunity to be uh, to be creative? It's or fun. It's just, okay. Absolutely. I mean, for me, it's like Christmas morning every day because okay. I get to unbox all this cool stuff and then make it all work, okay. you know? Um, and yeah, there's some creativity involved because, well, I wouldn't say so much creativity, it's product placement, right? it's product selection. Okay. Right? And so a client like yourself, you know, will come to me and say, hey, Anthony, I've got this man cave, right? And what can we do with it? Okay, so you brought that up. You put this together for me. You, you, you put the brains in it. You made it function. I did. Okay. This, this was one of my first babies. So, walk us through that. Now, I, I, the most I could say about it is, you know, just a plain white room. Yeah. You know, yeah. tan carpet. I know nothing of any type of uh, plates, whatever those plates are that go on the speakers and stuff like that. But, so, what, what would your experience as far as, because you, you hadn't been doing it for too long. No, I, ha I no, I hadn't. Um, you were. This was one of the first man caves that I did. That's why I call it one of my babies. Okay. You know, I, I have right. awesome memories, fond memories of, of doing this room. Um, but it was a perfect example of exactly what we we're talking about. I didn't do this in one visit. You contacted me first and said, "Hey, um, my name's Sean. This is what I've got." And you thought next door. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was. That's right. I, and I still remember the picture that you sent me. <laughs> you were sitting at this table, the one just like it in this room. 
uh, and he said, hey, you know, I, I have this room, I have some equipment, I'm not really sure, I, I need some help, okay. right? And so I came over, and this room was just white walls, yeah, tan, or, tan carpet, right, and nothing, right? And you had an idea of kind of what you wanted, you had some products, right? you had some nice Boston acoustic speakers, and a good, a good little Den and AVR, right? Yeah, I have no idea still. <laughs> we called them stereos back in the okay. day. Okay, now I know what that is. Yep. So you got to use like 1980 vernacular. <laughs> right? And I've got this TV, but I, you know, how can we put this all together? And the, the, that's where the creative side came in because I was able to say, okay, well, I think what, 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 what do you think about this idea? Right, and I shoot all of this, you know, I shoot all of this through you because right? I want your feedback and I, I want it to be what you want, not what I want. Yeah, and I had like an idea of what I wanted, but also I need to be told what's possible. Right. You were able to do that. A absolutely. the way you want it to function and falls within your budgetary parameters gotcha. and I, I know firsthand it doesn't have to be expensive to, yeah. to get any of this stuff done um, and it's not like I have just like this you know just to top the line everything is not that don't it let functions. him don't let him do that he has got a fantastic man cave he is oh no the, the man cave itself I, it's know, great it's yeah, but you, I mean as far as like with the and you've taken it beyond what I've done what I did I think I'm trying to be bashful. No, I mean I'm. You, you know, you you did great. I mean, he's he's got smart lights, smart plugs, voice activation. You know, out the wazoo. He can tell. Um, and you just came and tweaked it for me when he got here earlier. So you know. Well, yeah, that's the fun part is just tweaking little stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, you, you took a, you took a nice room with a nice audio setup and really made it your own. You know, and it shows. Yeah, I, I truly enjoyed being. Yeah, I enjoyed being. <laughs> I, I, I like when the, when the wife come up here. She don't see you. Just kind of let me have my own little little space up here. But when she come up here, we watch TV and mm -hmm. watch a few movies or whatever. Had a no, uh, volume cranked up. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It, it's it's sweet. But yeah. Um, but yeah, man. So I mean, you got a lot of this up and running for me, and I do appreciate you. Oh, you're very welcome. Very welcome. It's my so, pleasure. So. You did this, and then you moved on to a lot of bigger things. Yeah. It seems to get bigger and better for you. Um, is there a dream job that you have yeah. that you haven't come across yet? I I would say if I had a if I had a dream job, if I could say <clears throat> if somebody came, not that I'm looking to leave what I do. I love what I do, and but. Um, I don't think we're very far off from, see right now, if you're building a home, you're typically meeting with your home builder okay. and you're picking out the individual. And this is if you're building a home, of course, or if you're renovating a home and you're picking out certain things. You want walls in some places you want, or a great open room. Uh, you have the ability in a lot of cases when you're Full building. Full customization. A right, you can customize it, man. You can... I, you know, do you want it? Do you want the split level? Do you want the upstairs game room? A lot of floor plans and builders now have. You can have a one-story home, but upstairs is just a game room or a media room, right? So you can customize certain things. Um, 
a lot of people right now are putting in custom patios and such. So what I'm getting at is the ability to not only pick out how your home is built architecturally, but to have all of the technology already built into the home. Yeah, I imagine getting access, uh, viability, all that stuff comes into play with it. Oh, yeah. So you would lose your damn mind if, uh, if you got that opportunity to... Yeah, man, it, I mean, it would be great. There's, there's so many good home builders out there right now that offer that degree of, of customization that to add in, uh, not just smart home, but to add in all of the technical, all of the audio and all of the video and all of the networking to where when you move into your house, it's already functional in the way that you want it to function. So if I was a new client, mm -hmm. how would I go about, if I wanted to be a new client, how would I go about uh, contact? Well, um, I'm blessed to say that the vast, well, the vast majority, um, the majority of the business we get are either repeat or direct referrals. Okay. Um, I don't really have a marketing budget, um, meaning we're not out there advertising a whole lot of places. But um, we have the normals. So AAL social media. Co social media. So AAL Custom Media .com is the website. Okay. Um, we have a Facebook business page, um, which is also under AAL Custom Media. Okay. Um, Google searches. Um, we have a Google business page, so clients can find us in any of those ways as well. So if they go like to your Facebook page, uh, mm -hmm. you know, understand Facebook. Sure. Um, and that, and honestly, that's where more of the updates take place. Like I very rarely go into the website and update the photo gallery and the that, reviews that was, and yeah. that kind of thing. Whereas Facebook is much more, you know, usually on a weekly basis, I'm putting in some projects that we've done some before, during and after pics perhaps. Okay. And, um, or, you know, sending out shout outs, you know, hey, thank you to the Green family in Humble. Uh, we really hope that, you, you know, you guys make some family memories for many years to come. We enjoyed working with you. Um, you know, with some before, during and after photos, it's really helpful too when I am talking to new clients and I'm able to show them some photos of maybe give them inspiration of you know, show what them something that they may have not even thought, thought about. about. Right. Exactly. You know, you know. Again, going back into some of the different things that we do, a lot of people don't know that those things exist. And if they did know that they existed, don't know what products they need in order to make them work or how to make them function at all. I mean, just like. Most people have, most homeowners, right? If, you're, if your water pipes burst, you already know the plumber that you're gonna call, right? If, you know, you're, if, if your son knocks a hole in the wall, you probably already have a handyman that, that has done work for you that right. can come and pass that hole. More and more homeowners now need to have somebody like us or me, um, you know, in their mental Rolodex, if you will, for IT type related yeah, things are, or entertainment type related things. You good to have around. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So um, those would be the easiest ways for a client to contact me. My direct cell number is on most of those uh, platforms. Okay. Um, and I encourage clients, you know, call me directly. Yeah. Go take a look at some of his, uh, some of his work. It's, it's pretty damn good. Man. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now. We've come a long way. Uh, trust me. And that's, that kind of segues into what I was going to ask you next. Yeah. I mean, I've seen where you've... Um, where you've come from, you were already doing well, and this everything seems to be really taking off for you. Where do you see yourself, um, or what's this journey been like? As far it, as you know, it's it's been a wild ride. Um, I started off, so I, I spent over 20 years in the hospitality industry. Okay. I was a general manager um, while I was in my late 20s, um, and was a manager, uh, general manager for a seafood restaurant when. Uh, I had left, I did a few years as a regional ops manager for one of the national telecom companies. Um, and that's really when I started to gain a better understanding of how some of these systems worked. Okay. And then I got recruited back in to run a steakhouse uh, by a former colleague. And then decided, um, to, hey, I could have a little side business. Everybody's looking to make a little extra money, you know, when you're not work. And uh, so I just mount TVs around the neighborhood, you know, and utilize the next door app that everybody's familiar with. And just, you know, on my day off or before before going in for an evening shift, I might go just mount a TV. Right? Okay. And it was it was about a year, a year and a half when I really realized that this could be a full time business. There's a niche market here that not many people are are filling, right? Um, the most common, or, or I'd say the the most well known. 
and large competitor that I would have would be the Magnolia and Best Buy side. The difference between somebody like me, so a small company like us, and um, and a large company, a large outfit like that is, first of all, the person that you're talking to inside of one of those major retail outlets is not going to be the person inside of your home. They also don't know how the ins and outs of your home. What, what do your attic accesses look like? Where's your router placed? You know, what devices do you already have? What's going to be able to com be compatible with one another? Mm -hmm. Right. So <clears throat> I quickly saw that there was a niche in the market to fill. Right. And then I just continued. It's been, I mean, I do a lot of research. I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of asking questions from really smart people when there's something that I don't know. Right. So that I can add that in. So TV mounting then naturally progressed into surround sound, which naturally progressed into home theaters, which naturally, you know, then camera systems came after that. And then after camera systems really came in, a lot of the more high, you know, very technical networking solutions that we do also okay. um you know and we've just been blessed uh february will mark year number five uh of being in business um and we've just been I, i'm grateful we've grown every single year um typically about 25 to 35 percent year over year um adding in you know i have a, a, my top assistant, I would call him my partner, okay. uh, who works with me on uh, every large project that I do is invaluable. Um, replicating myself with him and then providing him installer assistance um, to then I can focus on bigger business and larger projects and getting, you know, expanding into and that's how you grow, the market. That's how you grow. Just about peace. That's it, man. Just little. It's a grind. Bait. It's a bait. It's a grind. You gotta, you gotta respect the grind and love the hustle, right? Yes. You know, and it's taking those baby steps. You know, not. I'm not. We're not gonna get to, you know, as big as we can get in the next month or even in the next year, but setting goals and you know, beginning with the end in mind. That's so important in everything that we do having an idea of where we want to end up you know i'd like to end up with a large company we're already serving the entire greater houston area i have clients from galveston island to new caney to Katy to baytown we've you had put some miles on that deal we put a lot of miles on the car yeah but i also i mean we, we have clients that uh, will sell a house or buy a second home um in dallas in San Antonio, we've done, we, we go out of town. Um, really? Absolutely. They had no idea. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, again, it's just part of being in that niche market and really more than anything is providing uh, customer service at a good price, uh, quality products. Because I told you when, I, when we got our land and get this house built, man, yeah. I, yeah, it's, and it's that's a priority. That's the it. fun stuff. That's when we get to sit down with floor plans and blueprint schedules yeah. and map everything out yeah, before that's, before Brown's ground that's, is that's, even that's broken. pretty damn exciting. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you know, that's when things get real fun. Get All to. these projects we've talked about, they're 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 really enjoyable. Now, Doing a new home setup, yeah. when we're coming in and spending two, three, four days and yeah. putting all of these systems in to where when a client gets gets their new home and they're, they got the movers there with all the furniture, everything's ready to go. Oh, man, it's, uh, I feel that in my spirit. Yeah, it gets me all excited I, just thinking about it. Of course, it. I don't need all that, but... Um... Yeah, I think uh, I'll end up spoiling myself. Well, you know, I mean, the, the cool thing about it, so think about right, when plasma TVs first came out mm -hmm. 10 years ago, right? 55 inch plasma TV was about five grand, right? Now you can get a 55 inch 4K, high dynamic range, you know, completely smart TV for well under a thousand dollars. So things aren't as expensive as people think they are. I think a lot of people are intimidated at the cost in order to achieve what they want. Right, that they think it's going to be more expensive than it is. I'd rather it be more expensive than try to go do it and be pleasantly, you know, surprised instead of trying to. When you you might lowball yourself thinking, you know, oh, maybe it's going to be this amount. Sure, but sure. And when anytime I send a quote off to a client, well, first of all, I've already talked about budget when I met with them the first yeah. time, but I always make sure to let them know, like, hey, if we want to move up or down the budgetary ladder, let me know. We can make adjustments. There are products under out there, everything under the sun. Okay. You know. 
All right, well, man, it's um, it's been a pleasure having you. Any, it's been any, great to any catch any up. Any last words? I don't want to say last words. It sounds negative, but anything, <laughs> anything you'd like to say? Yeah, you know, I would just say that it, if anybody out there is looking to improve or upgrade or, or really just have questions on how to make their homes operate in a way that suits their lifestyle best, not everybody wants an Alexa dot in every room. Not everybody wants a heavy networked environment. Not every, you know, there's just, there's something out there for everybody. Yeah. So I would say the best thing that somebody can do is to call and just ask, and not necessarily yeah, myself. Stick, stick your toe in it. Yeah, stick your toe and just ask questions. What's out there? You know, what's possible? Gotcha. You know, and go from there. Because it, you know, it. we're getting to a point now where it's, highly achievable to make your home do whatever you want it to do when i say, when i wake up in the morning sean i say alexa good morning i use alexa in my house right and my tv for my tv turn alexa stop my tv turns on to the news or my speakers start playing the music that i enjoy listening to my lights come on you know you you can really customize your home to make it function in a way that makes it more comfortable for you and that's the goal yeah and i was just thinking about that it's weird about barely hit a light switch like actually to physically touch, touch anything anymore. yeah it's, i don't know if that's good or bad but i just it's you know the possibilities of what you're able to do especially once you realize what you have well and it's about maximizing your time too you know so how much easier is it to just use something that's that's either voice activated or you don't have to use uh the alexa devices you can use your phone to control it all yeah i've done it yeah very cool man all right brother all right so this has been another episode of the kickback with sean p i'm anthony and you guys take care of each other and peace out love you guys